Hey guys, I'm Brad of Brave the Woods. Today we're going to be doing another really fun interview slash working demo, but this time it's going to be with my good friend Shay O'Connor. She's an Atlanta-based illustrator, uh, super talented character designer, and uh, she's just a whole lot of fun. So I'm excited to do this with you, and uh, let me, yeah, without further ado, this is uh, Shay. Hello! <laughs> good to see you. Likewise, yeah. I was to say the last time we saw each other was at Creative South. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, we had met, like, at one of them before, but this last time it was nice getting to, like, actually talk with you more and hang out, get barbecue, all that stuff. Yeah, we got to connect a whole lot more, and so yeah. <laughs> that's been fun. Now we became a lot better friends this way, and this this makes this whole, so much more now. fun. Basically. <laughs> you've actually been you've actually been in another YouTube video of mine, um, the one with the 15 questions with 15 different <laughs> artists. Yeah, yeah, from yeah. Creative South. Yeah, I was yeah. from Creative South, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> it's a real connection there. No, that was that was a lot of fun, and, I, and that's where I started to follow your work even more. And um, but yeah, so this is really cool. I'm glad to have you on here. Me too. <laughs> All right, so I, I kind of gave you a really brief introduction, but can you tell us a little bit more about you and your background? Is that cool? Sure, absolutely. Um, so I guess mostly I'm a digital artist with the vintage vibe. So illustration is definitely my passion. I do have a background in graphic design and motion design as well, which has really helped inform my illustration. Um, but yeah, it's been, I've been working, I guess, in the industry for about math, uh, five to seven years, uh, mostly as a graphic designer. But lately, I've been really just trying to push the illustration and, and mainstream my career into more of that. Yeah, and that's that's kind of I feel like that's kind of tough to make that transition. I know a lot of people who are doing that same type of thing. Even when I was talking to uh, Joel Santana in one of my previous interviews, you know, he was working at an ad agency and, and doing more design work, but in, injecting some illustration in there. But it's it's hard. I feel like as illustrators, you kind of have to you have to weasel in your your illustration work if that's not the first route that you went. Like me with design, and and you were a designer too first, correct? Right, right. Well, and it's like you feel like you don't really know, like, know how to work as an illustrator. Like, it sounds like something that people do, but it's so elusive where you're just like, how do people write kids' books? Or, you know, how are they actually making a living at this? How does this work? And I'm obviously still working on that, and I feel like I have to have my hands in a bunch of different pots to just be able to, like, scrounge it up to make a living right now. But mm -hmm. starting to, like, actually gain momentum and, like, got an illustration agency that I signed with and getting better projects through that. And that's been, that's been really big for me. Um, but right now it's actually been really cool. Like, because I'm working part-time at a design firm and then I get to have the rest of my time to like work on developing this whole designed by Shea brand, uh, which yeah. has been really cool. Cause it's like, I like to still be able to put my designer hat on. And I also like to be able to like work with other people and not be weird working by myself. <laughs> um, <laughs> It gets kind of like, yeah. Well, your cat, like, your, your your animals aren't enough for you? <laughs> they are. Well, and my husband will do. Uh, no. Well, he, he's a musician, so he travels a lot. So, like, I would be at home by myself a lot. And I was just like, I would go to the grocery store, and that would be the first time I'd see a person and, like, really be, like, overly chatty with them and freak them <laughs> out and just, like, please take your groceries and leave. Um, That's funny. So, yeah, like it's been nice to be able to split my time that way and kind of have a little bit of structure to my schedule as well. Because if I don't have that structure there, like I will just wake up, work, and then go to sleep. So like, yep. like all the time. So no. it helps kind of. I hear that. Yeah, I think we're we're kind of in the same boat, and that's why <laughs> I relate so well to what you're saying. Yes. <laughs> um, definitely so. Except I have like a few kids too that run around and and, uh, and run through the office. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna show people some of your work first, and then we'll jump straight okay. into it. But do you want to? While I'm showing people your work, do you want to describe kind of the, your style and then what you're gonna be doing for us today? Sure. Um, well, I definitely, like I said, I really like a lot of vintage things. I have a very feminine style, uh, sinuous lines, lots of S curves. Um, so yeah, it's very feminine and I love it and I have so much fun drawing and I decided that the person I would draw today would be our like main vintage fashion icon, which is Audrey Hepburn. And one of her most iconic looks, I think, is when she's in her Givenchy dress from Breakfast at Tiffany's. It's just beautiful and stunning. So I figured that would be a, a good lady to draw. Yes. No, it's classic. And I, <laughs> I think I, it was funny because I had seen you drawing this on your Instagram live. Uh, so you had drawn this uh, illustration before, but if I'm correct, you're going to be taking us from start to finish 
uh, but you're going to be doing it just as you would normally. You're not going to be tracing over existing illustrations or whatever. Is that yeah, correct? Okay. It never cool. happened. So yeah. we're going to see this never happened. We're going to see the process <laughs> like it was, you know, it's the first time ever. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. I'm going to do like my kind of rough sketches and stuff and basically like starting from a blank canvas. Cause a lot of times I think we see like the finished product of a lot of illustrators, which is so fun and pretty, but it can kind of, like also be a little bit discouraging. Um, so I'll just show you like my sketches aren't super pretty, like the rough ones, like it gets real jangly, but mm -hmm. it's how I get something on paper. They're prettier or, than it. mine. That's for sure. <laughs> especially, with, especially with characters. <laughs> <laughs> okay well yeah. I, i'm gonna i'm gonna go jump in and let you just uh just start tackling uh your project there so we can kind of see so now i'm looking at your screen we got your artboards up and you got your you leave your inspiration up on one side uh yeah i have it on another artboard um so that i can just have that pulled up which is nice um and just reference it but i think i'm going to do this pose of her on the left where she's eating the croissant but i'm going to change it up just slightly to fit more of the intro scene where she like sips the coffee. Oh yeah. So, um, but these other pictures, like the bottom right one is really good for the colors. And then the other, the top one is like, it's an illustration that somebody did at the cover. So it's kind of neat to see how somebody else handled the styling of her too. That's um, true. So let's just start. That's no, not weird. I'm just going to watch for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, it's funny because I, I am genuinely intrigued. I know people who are watching are, are intrigued as well, and I think that I'm making this just for you guys, but it's for me too. So I'm going to enjoy this as well as you. <laughs> <laughs> so right off the bat, though, I'm noticing that you're not really making any sort of skeleton underneath um no circle, you know, no head with all the lines to kind of show where the eyes go and everything. So do you just, is this typically how you draw just free form organic draw your shapes yes it is now um i definitely like learned how to oops that's really low i don't like that undo um i learned how to like do the method that you're talking about and then also like took like figure drawing and stuff like that in school um okay. but with the style that i've been developing like everything's already simplified enough that i think when i start to do those sphere shapes all my characters just started to look the exact same um so when i'm drawing it like this i feel like i'm making all the lines really unique and i'm kind of catering them to that specific character oh, um man. like i'm i'm really focusing on making her jaw like really sharp right now because that's she had a really sharp lovely jaw um jaw line so i don't know it kind of helps me build the character more uniquely probably saves you a lot of time too having that having at least the the background and knowing knowing the rules beforehand and having all that practice probably it gets yeah. you to this point, right? Yeah. Well, and I'm like a huge rule follower too. So like, don't think that I'm like, <laughs> I'm not like, I'm too good for these. Like definitely I would encourage like people to like learn how to draw tra like traditionally and actually learn how to draw anatomically correct. Cause it will inform your illustration. Like when you're making these decisions on what areas to accentuate, like it's just going to inform that. So you can start yeah. taking some creative liberties once you've already you know, you know, the hand is so like, for example, like for me, and it's interesting to have a question too, about your, you draw a lot of women and oh, yeah. I draw men and sometimes I'm intimidated to draw women. And for, <laughs> for whatever reason, uh, maybe because I, I typically draw men more, but, um, is there, is there a reason why you like to draw women more or is this, is this a deliberate uh, choice or is it just, you just like, I just enjoy drawing the female form. <laughs> All of those things, I guess. Um, I think a lot of us draw, like, what we know and what we're comfortable with. So being a woman, it's like I'm generally, like, I just draw kind of what I know. But um, also, like, just the natural, like, style and, like, the way that I draw, it's very, like, that sinuous. And women have a lot more S-curves and men are so much more angular. So I've been, like, I'm trying really hard to make myself draw more men and include you guys. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, and I'm also trying, like, right now I feel like I, I'm drawing a very thin white woman, and I think it's really important that I don't always do that, and I'm, like, more inclusive with mm -hmm. ethnicities and age and body shapes and all that kind of stuff, too. So I definitely am trying to make a lot more of an effort to, like, diversify my portfolio and make sure that everybody's represented. For sure. Uh, but, yeah, women is definitely probably, like, my comfort zone, I would say, you know? I, I mean, I get it. I, I, after, 
you know, drawing men for me is like it's because you, you said it's a lot more like angular, and you can get away with a lot of those like strong like geometric shapes. Whereas mm-hmm. with with women, it's a lot more organic. And um, but yeah, I noticed too because what was it? Uh, Scott Fuller, he's a friend of <laughs> like a mutual friend of ours, and I just remember you doing his portrait. And I had never seen you draw like a, uh, like a man before. And so when you drew his, when I was like, it's weird, but it's funny. Cause like he, he has like these beautiful eyelashes and he has like this, he's got all he's the, crack up when he sees I know maybe he, I, I mean, I haven't looked that deep into his eyes in real life. So maybe, maybe he does have those beautiful eyelashes, but, um, he does have, he does have a big, beautiful beard and you did capture that really well. Big red beard. Great majestic beard. Yeah. So actually Scott, um, uh, was my AIGA mentor. They have a mentorship program. Um, so we got paired together and one of the things that he pointed out, he was like, so you're only drawing women and I think you should draw men. You should draw me. And I was like, okay. <laughs> he just wanted a free portrait is what he wanted. <laughs> but it was a good challenge. And like, honestly, that beard, like I went crazy with this beard. Cause I was like, yeah. I can let the squirrels live in there. Um, yeah. <laughs> but everything else, it was like, it was really tricky. Cause he's so like angular and even like all the clothes he's wearing. It's like this under armor shirt. With and his hat like, too. Yeah. His trucker hat. Yeah. His trucker hats. And it was, it was a good challenge. Um, and I think he liked it. So. So this is, I, I know he loved it because he told me about it and he was making me jealous. I wanted one. Um, but in, I'm not saying that now. That's not, that's not me asking you. No, 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 I, I was just I'm holding it to you because now on YouTube, everyone knows that I've requested it. They're expecting, just kidding. Um, but with, with, uh, this just kind of made me think of, you know, you're drawing somebody from real life right now. This is like, this is Audrey Hepburn. She's you know, she's passed away and, and you're not having to be criticized from Audrey herself, you know, <laughs> on your drawing. How is that drawing? Because I know you accept commissions too uh, for, for drawing, you know, people or their significant others. How is that process in, in terms of like the finding out like where's that line of what you include? Uh, like if they have a giant nose, are they, do you ask them if they want their giant nose? Is that even a thing? Like, That's definitely how I ask it. Yeah. Like, do you want that giant <laughs> nose? Do you want me to like shrink it? Cause like, how do you even ask that? So well, how do you approach things like that? If you're like, what if they have this big crazy mole on their head that you're like, I want to yeah. show that, but I don't want to make it look bad. You know what I mean? No, it's such a good question. And also, I feel like I'm having some technical difficulties really quick. There we are. Um, <laughs> yeah, so at first it was awkward um, because, yeah, like you want to make sure that you're highlighting the nice parts about that person, but like not ignoring the parts that might be considered flaws. You know, sure. you want to be respectful of that. And because if I ignore <laughs> Probably shouldn't that, call them flaws. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> might be considered flaws. <laughs> I don't think they are, but it's like they're just distinguishing features. Usually. For sure. Um, yeah. So, yeah, like if I were to like not include that mole, like someone would be like, well, clearly, like you don't think that looks good. So it's like That's definitely true. it's a delicate dance. OK. Um, but I think at this point, like I've drawn so many that like you can almost just shop my Instagram feed and see like if there's a character that you kind of relate to that have already drawn and they sort of know what they're getting into. It's like, Oh, like she drew this person and looked like that. And they can even reference it and send it to me. Oh, that's a good idea. Which is really helpful. Yeah. So I think that's helped dial it in. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been interesting trying to like, you know, I, I've worked corporately for a while. And so you learn all these different illustration techniques and stuff in different styles. Um, but this one that I'm trying to develop, that's uniquely me, I'm trying to make it really inclusive. So a lot of times I do really simplify features, um, or like care colors or anything like that so that more people could relate to them, but I still try. Yeah. Like, I mean, they do that in Disney movies too, where it's like, for example, Belle, who's like my favorite, I'm like, Oh, well she has like the same skin color and hair color as me. And like, our eyes are pretty similar. So like, I'm her, you know? Oh, sure. Like but she doesn't have any crazy distinguishing features. Like if she had like a really like long nose or something, I'd be like, man, like game over. Like she's got that beauty mark. Like I can't be her now. (laughs) Like, so it's all about like trying to like give someone like that, their unique look, but also like making it, I don't know. Yeah. No, I get that. Yeah. I I feel, I I really feel for caricature artists and I like respect, (laughs) respect them so much because I'm like, that is a tough job. Like drawing in front of somebody in general is tough sometimes because you feel like they're oh, they're man. criticizing or they're seeing like you know how the how the hot dogs made or whatever. 
<laughs> you know, and you're just like, oh, it's really crappy until the end. And all of a sudden you're like, this, see, this is what I wanted to show you. I didn't want to show you this whole nasty process of these ugly sketches. But with the character artists, you know, they're doing it all right there. and they're, and they're they're But they're doing yeah. it with people as well. And I actually had a small – I did this a couple times. Uh, I actually did some caricature drawings, which nobody will ever see or know of. But I did that – for uh, a company at, for South by Southwest Live, and I would I was doing this technology that was kind of screen sharing what I was doing, and you could collaboratively collaboratively draw on the same like whiteboard. So okay. people would come, and I could see these new people, and they'd walk up to the camera, and they would tell them about this new product while I drew their face. And uh, it was, I'm not a caricature <laughs> artist, but like I've done caricatures before, but I don't consider myself a caricature artist at all. And the process was. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. That's a good question. Like I was, some people, I feel like it was kind of mixed. Like most people were just like, oh, someone drew me. That's cool. You know, like they weren't paying for it. So like in your situation, it'd probably be a lot different because people are actually yeah. paying for this. But, you know, for me, it was like, they just wanted it to be kind of a entertainment factor for, for this event. And uh, people got a kick out of it. But I noticed that right away. That was like the hardest thing to do was like, I would be you, you. I didn't want to like go around her like gap in her teeth or whatever. I want to draw that, but I also didn't want to accentuate it if she was embarrassed I, by it. You know. Well, it depends on what they sign up for. Like, if some people know they're gonna almost get like roasted, like with the caricature drawing, then like you can just like let it go. Yeah. But yeah, if people are looking to be like have a flattering representation of them, yeah. it's tricky. Well, I, I, it was funny because as I was drawing some of these, like at the very beginning, I kind of held back a little bit and I would kind of put that, I would make that gap less noticeable in her teeth or whatever, for example. Um, and I, not because I thought it would be, maybe that was, that was like subconsciously, that was just some, something that I shouldn't have been thinking like, Oh, that's like, that's a flaw. I should fix that. But I didn't know, I guess I, my, my sensitivity was like, I wasn't sure what her reaction would be to it. If I, yeah. if maybe she was embarrassed by it, I don't know. And, yeah. uh, and I probably should have not been thinking that way, but anyway, so I kind of toned it down a little bit and then yeah. she's on the other end, you know, she's like live on the other video end, and she was like, cause she can see me drawing it live. It's not like I just reveal it at the end. So she can see the whole process. <laughs> And yeah. so she was, it was really, which kind of sucked, but she was really funny because after she's like, Hey, you didn't put that gap big enough for my teeth. Look at it. It's look how big it is. She like pointed it out. And then she was like, I she love my it. gap. And she was like, yeah. and then she's like, and my eyebrows, and she's like, Oh, you made my eyebrows look so, I mean, she just like went on and on about the features. And I was like, you know, I really just need to just play up some of these features that they have and not be so scared that I'm like worried about it being considered a flaw or whatever it is. Yeah. Cause you know, if you, you notice it, like they notice it. So, right. I, that's what I assume. Right. Yeah. So what, are you are you finished with this sketch then? You're rough? I'm, yeah, I'm finished with the rough. I feel like it's all kind of like loosely there. You probably yeah. saw I was struggling so hard to draw that hand with the coffee cup. Was no. Like, cool. um, <laughs> if this is your yeah, rough, so, then mine are going to be – mine are really, really, really rough. <laughs> uh, well, that's good. cool though. Cause you probably... <laughs> all right. So the next one will be like the clean sketch where I'll just go on top of it and – make my final decisions okay so i'm going to show people yeah. the rough here okay and i'm going to move into your clean sketch this feels pretty clean so i'm looking forward to to seeing this super clean <laughs> really oh. okay well it looks pretty good so okay well, yeah can you i didn't i didn't I forgot to ask this uh what what equipment are you drawing on right now oh yes um i am using a cintiq wacom wow 22 HD, um, which is, uh, I really love it. Um, and then I'm using like a Mac mini, uh, and I'm drawing in Photoshop. Awesome. Yeah. I guess I should have said that, called that out a little earlier, but yeah, I actually had a Wacom, uh, the, the Cintiq 22 HD. I really liked that model. Yeah. Mine, what do you have right now? So I have the, the Cintiq 24 pro Okay. now the newest one, but I wasn't planning on getting it actually. I mean, it's never a bad thing, but I, I just wasn't planning on it until my screen died on my my twenty two. I think that's what's happening to mine because it's Is like it? block- yeah, it's glitching out a little bit every once. In- I've had it for like my five years or something. It's, it's time. I got it, but I'm gonna use good. it until I can't. You really should. Well, I also noticed you can actually, this maybe, I'll be really quick. You can take it in and they'll, uh, you can send it in and they'll replace the screen for 300 bucks so you can keep using it. If, if the hardware is fine, then, you know, you can just replace the screen and you should be uh, in good shape, which I'm planning on probably doing that and maybe selling it or, or something like that. 
Oh, hey. Nice. But Yeah, okay. So Photoshop and what brushes are you using? Uh, the Kyle Mega Brush Pack. And they can find comes... that on Adobe? Yeah. It, they come included with Photoshop now, which is really great. The Creative Cloud uh, plan. Yes. Um, so the one that I've been using for the clean and rough sketch is the bonus gritty dry gouache brush, um, which is like such a mouthful. Um, <laughs> I really is. like it cause it's, it's a little bit loose. So it makes my stuff feel less precious cause I tend to get really caught up in details. Um, cause I love them, but it's really good for me to, um, to use this kind of rough textural brush to get me out of that mindset. Yeah. That's an interesting approach too. Cause Maybe I subconsciously do that because I usually pick a rough brush too and it feels more like a sketch. Maybe it's because yeah, I want it to look like pencil. Like pencil. <laughs> yeah, I never even thought about it. Like, I was like, maybe like for me, I was like, this has to look like it's an actual sketch because I'm not sketching on paper anymore. I'm clearly just doing this all digitally. Do you ever feel like, yeah. do you, so do you work analog as well or is it pretty much all digital now? Like for even for your sketch phases? Man, it's mostly digital now. Like it used to be analog and like scan stuff in and add colors that way. But mm -hmm. um, no, I mean, I usually do exactly what I'm doing right now. And then when I don't want to take this spaceship of a setup everywhere, sure. I'll take my iPad, which has been like really liberating. Because um, again, when you're like working by yourself so much and you're just like, I need like social inter interaction, which I'm mm -hmm. an introvert. So like it, it takes a lot. never to know. You, well, I can like, put, I'm an extrovert poser or something, huh. but, um, yeah. So like, it's just nice to get out. Um, so I'll do a lot of sketching on my iPad pro too, which I sometimes like sketching more on Same. like, I feel like the lines, like it feels a little bit more natural. Uh, yeah, sorry. I'm like trying so hard to multitask no, right that's, now. Those are some pretty intense spirals that you're trying to draw and talk at the same time. <laughs> I couldn't do it. So you notice why I'm on this end asking you to do this. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, no, that's uh, that's interesting though. Cause ever I've talked to a lot of different illustrators and, and when they jump on the iPad, they, they say the same thing. Like it's very, it's much more natural feeling drawing on the ipad and there's some things i do to like make that even more natural like the I know, it's streamlined. yeah there's streamlined you also have like the if you don't like that metal feel or the glass feel when you're drawing on it you can add some like really cheap uh, matte screen protectors that make it feel more paper-like and um, too, yeah those are great but yeah it's i i find that using the ipad is that's what's really taking me away from my sketchbook. I feel like I'm like, yeah. it's just cause it feels so natural. It's, it's nice and portable. And I like a lot of times I like to work with the colors first, which is strange, but the process yeah. for me is like, I like that's to have the, them kind of the, the colors kind of influence like the mood and the mood is kind of what influences my illustration. So for me, I like to be able to swap out those colors real quick. And when I'm doing that analog, it's kind of a pain. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, it just, it really does streamline the process, but I mean, I think it's, it's sort of back to what we we're talking about with drawing figures and like me breaking the rules right now. It's like, I think it's good to know how to actually do that in your sketchbook and like have done that. And yeah. now like, I mean, it's like, we're, this is our job. So like, if you can increase your workflow and that's good for you and you enjoy that, like do it. You Thanks. do you. I needed, I needed that. <laughs> <laughs> I needed permission. That's what I needed. Okay. You're welcome. I give you my blessing. <laughs> Thank you. Well, because you see all these, uh, and this is because I'm not knocking people who have beautiful uh, sketchbooks because I'm actually doing the opposite. Like, I, I really envy those people who can just, you know, draw off of the computer and not need Control Z or layers or whatever. And I'm yeah. so. I feel like I'm so um, tied to that now. <laughs> like, I need. Like, I'll, I'll literally start like double tapping with two fingers on my piece of paper I know. <laughs> and I'm trying to go back and, and so the, I, that's a reference to using a uh, procreate on the iPad pro. Is that what, what programs do you like to draw in on the iPad pro? Just procreate. Procreate. Although yeah. I know Adobe is going to be coming out with uh fresco. Yes. Adobe yeah. fresco. Are you excited for that? I'm going to say fresco. <laughs> I know fresco. <laughs> it's a good um, drink. Yeah. I mean, I'll be curious to see what they're going to do. And I guess like better late than never. Um, so we'll see how they actually compete uh, with Procreate. But mm -hmm. I mean, if it could be more seamless, like integrating into my Adobe programs, or especially if I could use more vectors, that would be a game changer. Because I think right now mm -hmm. Procreate, like they just introduced a bunch of like type stuff. Um, but vectors are still not really something that I, I play with in there. I use Illustrator. 
Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting. Yeah, I agree. I, I it's funny because like I, I love uh, Adobe products. I love Procreate, but it's kind of funny how like I've really now leaned into Procreate as like the main tool for my iPad. But and I mm-hmm. and like the Adobe ones, I haven't been as impressed with because they're kind of like watered down versions of Illustrator and Photoshop. I- you know, it's not like it's a, in its full glory. It's like you're just a ghost of yourself. It really <laughs> is. It's not. It's like the same thing. It's like it's like if I was to download it from my phone, which I, you know, like that's pretty much what it is. And I'm like, I don't really want that. I want, I want like a. I use my iPad Pro for like start to finish my all my projects. Like I don't want to have to. That's why when Procreate added text and all that stuff, I was super happy because I was like, I can keep it yeah. all here in one program. But it's just funny because like my mind immediately is like. I don't want Adobe's to be better than Procreate because I don't want to leave Procreate for whatever reason. Like, I'm, I don't know why I have some sort of a loyalty to it or allegiance to, to Procreate, but I've really been impressed with the user interface in Procreate, Procreate and how it's been, it, it's so hidden. Like you don't have, it's, it's not in your way obstructive, but you can still find what you need. Right. <clears throat> and I mean, I feel like they've done a really good job too of listening to their customers who have been like, I need a clipping mask. And like they provided that. So exactly. Yeah. I'll, I'll probably still be using Procreate, but I'm definitely going to try out Fresco too. I'll try it out. I'll be cheating on Procreate for a little bit and test it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is looking really good. So, yeah. not, so you're you're wrapping up all your line work now, and I then, am. but this isn't going to be your final. Isn't going to have line work in it, is it? Because I, I I mean, looking, I'm going to look back at your final. Doesn't look like you keep any of the lines. Yes, I, she already has the final here, and I'm gonna. Well, that way, we'll show you. That way, you can see all of the yes. stages, uh, and <laughs> yes, it's beautiful, by the way. <laughs> this has been drawn. <laughs> no, you're gonna be very impressed when you see the see the end result. Oh man, yeah, I I know. Like sometimes I get really sad about not keeping this really pretty line work because it's like I really do like the way that looks. So I think for certain pieces, I'm gonna start like incorporating it a bit more. But what I've been doing that. I really like the look of it. It's just using flat colors um, with no line work to separate it because it makes you use your colors really carefully. Like you have to make very conscious truth. decisions, <laughs> um, especially when things are overlapping. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to keep it in here, but I do try super hard to make it as pretty as I can because it will make the next step work more successfully. Like my shapes will that look that much stronger if I've made sure that my line work is good. Yes. I think. Preach. So. That is one thing that I talk about all the time. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Cause it's like, for me, it's like, if I can get that groundwork laid, like the skeleton, like really nice. And, and, and then it helps, like, it just speeds up the process. It makes it way more enjoyable on the other end too. Cause then you get into all the detail work and you come back and you're just like, well, crap, I didn't like how the, you know, I didn't even like the pose all that much or the hair wasn't even that great, but now you have to go back a step. Stuck. So it's nice to be, yeah, it's nice to be happy with this part and then just, yeah. Yeah render at the end yeah it really does save you time and like in the long run like doing it right from from the get-go um okay so these are gonna be pearls and (laughs) boop them in i was gonna say before we move on to like the the thing you mentioned that i thought was really important and uh was about color and how difficult it is to put color on color as and then not having the outlines to like the line work to divide it I've yeah. noticed that a ton. Like I, I couldn't quite put my finger on what it was, but I've started to do a little bit more line work because it's it's a little easier and it's kind of fun. I was like, I can just color it in like a coloring book. Yeah, like DIY and, color book. <laughs> well, and then you don't have to worry about the the colors. Like you can get away with some colors getting next, like the contrast. You don't have yeah. to worry about like the values being super contrasting because mm-hmm. it's already separated by the lines. But I know. <laughs> when you go flat color, that's why this is even more impressive. Once you get to the next stage, people are going to see this. Uh, you know, they're going to see how hard it is. Like, they're not going to understand. But it, it, for those who are illustrators, you're going to really understand what we're talking about because the, having that those colors on top of colors without any line work dividing it is uh, is tricky. Yeah. Well, so. with that said, shall we move on to color? <laughs> let's move on to color. Wait, uh, yeah, well, let's move on to color. Bit. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Jump right into it. Okay. I don't know. We're probably running out of time, but no, we're figure good. I can just show how I start it. Um, so I do like a gray background, which is just makes that white less glary on your eyes. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. I just really like having it gray. And then I'll take my sketch and reduce the opacity. So it's just like a really faint ghostly guideline. And then I start 
add in some color. Cool. And we're going to start drawing. So you're going to just be drawing underneath this layer. then. Correct? Underneath it. Yeah. And I'll just like turn it off and on every once in a while. But I try really hard to like copy it pretty exactly. I think I'm going to use the China Marker 20 brush. It's also in the Kyle Omega brush pack. That's what it looks like. Oh, cool. And I will use the Pantone swatches to just get me started um, to color pick, which is nice. Um, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I'll usually alter them just a little bit for however or however I see fit. Perfect. Now, question. Now, while you, I'll let you start working on the color here. Um, I, my, I had a question just about the style because looking at this now, like it feels to me, it feels very kind of Art Nouveau, like all the especially with like the swirls and the hair and and maybe just because you're drawing a lot of women too, it feels like I feel like the yeah. art new, you know the Art Nouveau movement, like with uh, Alphonse Mucha. I have this big okay. coffee table book with his work in it, and uh, it just kind of reminds me of that. Is what I'm I'm rejecting what I what I think you're doing, but what what are some of your inspirations for your illustration style? Um. Well, I do love Art Nouveau, and I'm super flattered that you thought of that because <laughs> that that type of work is beautiful. Um, and I do like the era a lot. I really like um, a little bit after the Art Nouveau period is Aubrey Beardsley's work. Um, he's just got incredible line work, really striking. It's all mostly all black and white, and he was really prolific. He died super young, but like pumped out all of this amazing work, and it's it's really strange. So I really like his work is his the um, stuff that's is it kind of macabre like a lot of this stuff or is that yeah and it can be pretty graphic too <laughs> uh, but th- the line quality and yeah. the black and white is so elegant so sometimes just that contrast of seeing like <laughs> these crazy scenes illustrated so beautifully like i love that juxtaposition yeah that is yeah his work is awesome but yeah, you'll yeah. see like beheadings and things like that. <laughs> I've yeah. seen some stuff and it's just, but it looks so like the, the line work is beautiful. You're right. You're like, but it's pretty. But it's uh, pretty. <laughs> <laughs> so I think also another person who's got really amazing line quality is Al Hirschfeld, who is more, he, he was a cartoonist. So he's done a lot of stuff of celebrities. And like, if you look up Carol Channing, Car- Carol Channing, I've just all of a sudden named dropped a blank on her name <laughs> you know what this oh, will all yeah. the correct everything correct Girl will be down it. in the description below <laughs> <laughs> yeah. if you need to find a look okay. down below it's in there <laughs> yeah don't listen to me it is carol channing uh, okay awesome i just like doubted myself but um yeah he's got some great characters and his line quality is insane and disney stuff i love disney stuff too so. i can totally see that and you mentioned yeah. bell earlier but yeah i could totally see it in your work <laughs> <laughs> slightly obsessed um yeah like but actually hercules is maybe my favorite just as far as visually i think the line work and the shapes in that are gorgeous Uh, and the colors i could totally Uh, see that yeah so nice um so i'm obsessed with that i feel like well one yeah it now that you mentioned hercules it totally looks like the hercules artwork in a good way not i'm sure your your style came first but it's, it looks like I'm sure this is your style. And then you're like, oh, I love Hercules Actually, because it I feels five, like mine. they consulted me. Um, so, Clearly. Well, yeah. No. <laughs> no. I mean, I loved that movie as a kid for sure. It influenced me. Everything Disney that I watched influenced me, including just like the feeling and the brightness and the energy like behind a lot of the things I do. I like everything to stay really like light and positive, but also like, I think it's important, like, I've tried really hard to include more um, history in my drawings, so, like, drawing really awesome ladies throughout history who should be known and who aren't. Um, So, like, even, like, Hedy Lamarr, who was a 1920s or 1940s starlet, like, she was more known for that, but she was actually, like, basically, you can thank her for the Wi-Fi that we're using right now. She was an insane inventor, so it's, like, trying to, like, but it's so... Yeah, like on YouTube, I'm starting to do a couple of videos where, like, you'll watch me drawing these people, and they're, like, really interesting looking, but more interesting than, like, their faces is what's behind that. Like, they have beautiful brains and talents and stuff, so it's, I really am trying to, like, you know, it's so nice to just draw pretty things, and, like, that can be really therapeutic for me personally, but I do think it's important to be, like, in touch with what's going on, so... 
trying uh, to find that balance. I can vouch for it though. So everybody watching, look up Design by Shay. It's her YouTube channel, <laughs> and it's nice because it feels a little bit like a podcast, but you get to watch her draw these, you know, you know beautiful illustrations and and people, and then she tells a little bit of history about the those people that she's drawing. And so it's inter- it's it's definitely it's nice because you get a it's a nice watching time lapses and watching people draw, but sometimes you can get a little bit. I don't know. It's, it's it, after a while you're like, okay, she's drawing and she's really good, and it's gonna, I'm going to skip to the end and see what it looks like at the very end. But yeah. I do, and and that's kind of why I did these types of things too. I wanted you to work and talk at the same time, which is I know is asking a lot, but, <laughs> but not not just for you for everybody. I feel like it is kind of tricky, but um, yeah, her, her I, I've listened to a few of your your more recent. Um, episodes and I, I was really intrigued by the history and some of the cool stories that you shared about these individuals and I thought that was really cool so check it yeah, out thank you. <laughs> thanks friend uh, For it's sure. been really fun yeah YouTube is like it's a totally different thing like I feel like Instagram and we've chatted about this like I kind of understand Instagram yeah but YouTube and like making videos and trying to figure out like what do people actually want to see and like who's all watching this like how can i make a little something for everybody um has been really interesting and fun to figure out so yeah yeah no i'm just like what's that i said no i agree with you because we we, i mean you've you your channel is relatively new as well yeah yeah still dialing it in like because i feel like time lapses like you were saying they're fun to watch but eventually like you just get kind of fatigued and you just want to skip to the very end of it Mm -hmm. so it's like trying to include a little something extra Yes. And I'm, this is completely off subject now because I, every time I look at this, I'm like, now you mentioned Hercules. I just see Meg. Yeah. <laughs> just like in, in, the, in the best of ways, like, you know, you see, you can see this, uh, yeah, her character there. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty, uh, the just the neck. Can... I think it's the neck. They can see, they can see Meg right now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. I can't see Meg, but you guys have fun. <laughs> <laughs> you will see Meg after you watch this, this okay. episode. Oh, um, yeah. But yeah, I could totally see like how you draw like the slender, like the just just her build. I think really, really speaks. to Yeah, me. accentuating like well, she's got very slender waist and like a badonk too. So yeah, <laughs> she's pretty cool. Somehow she was gifted happens. with all of that. Somehow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm not sure how that happens, but yeah, like this isn't quite realistic. So yeah, even, like with that, I know I feel kind of bad because it's like Audrey's just so fun to draw because she's so like. She's a beautiful, but at the same time, like, she's just, like, very slender white lady. So, like, I really am trying. I should have drawn somebody else for this. <laughs> no, no. No, I think it's fine. And, I, I mean, it's in, she's she's a really – the thing about her, about Audrey Hepburn, I like about because, like, she's just so classy. Like, aside yeah. from her, her physical shape and everything – and in her beauty, she's just a really classy woman. And, uh, you know, on, on on and off the screen, she's just like a, an awesome oh, yeah. person. So, yeah, she that's cool. wasn't she super like involved with UNICEF too? And yeah, did she? I think she stopped years? doing, yeah, and then she stopped doing films because she was, uh, she was really focusing on her family for, for a bit. And, um, yeah. but yeah, she was just, I mean, she's just a, a good, good woman overall. Yeah, she's super fascinating to list, uh, learn about. I know a little bit. Um, now what? Well, there, there, there's your next episode. <laughs> yeah, I might have to. No, she's like she's really fascinating, and she just seems like a lovely person through and through. Um, but yeah, sorry for sure. Multitasking. Well, no, no. You job. You go ahead. You, you do your thing. Okay. Uh, if uh, do you want to go? Let's let's do this. I mean, you, I don't, you, you can you can color, and it's fun to watch you color. But let's uh, let me show everybody what the final looks like. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that cool? Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll jump into there. So. Let me, Jump into the future. We're jumping into the that future. Was also the past. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. And we're gonna see the final piece. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. Oh, you did a beautiful. great job. I, the colors and everything. And I noticed too that you you have this like the cool thing about your style is that you can you kind of give the you're very you have very graphic uh, representation of these people, but. You then you can then like the really illustrative like uh, accents and and like little details that you add like the the shading and just the right places and the little details in the hair. It's cool because you get the best of both worlds. You get the very graphic approach, but you also get all the little fun details and textures and that you'd you'd want in like a really 
I don't even know. I don't even have to say that. It's just a, you did a great job, and, and I like the I like the juxtaposition yeah. of like the flat the flat dress. Like she didn't put much form. I feel like in mm-hmm. like her dress because it's just mm-hmm. like a cool shape, and then her hair has so much depth to it. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much, man. That French twist, French twist, the hairstyle. <laughs> they're confusing in real life, but also drawing them <laughs> is so confusing. You saw me like have like a brain fart when I was trying to talk <clears throat> and draw the yeah. dolls. But yeah, it's nice to sort of mix up um, like just these really strong shapes, but then getting some of those details. So like in the hair, like adding that extra line work to really help you understand like where the hair is going. Um, but like, you don't need more information. Like you were saying on her dress, like it's really understandable the position that she's in. Like we don't need more line work. Like just keep it simple. It's true. Yeah. It's cool. It's just, it's just interesting to say, like to see like what parts you decided to add the more, add more detail to. But I feel like if you added that much detail to everything, you'd lose this really nice, like bold illustration. Cause it would just feel almost a little too muddy or it's, I feel like you have to go like hard either direction. Like I almost yeah. feel like if you're not going to do the, like this perfect, the way that you're doing you it right commit. here, you have to commit yeah. either way. You're either going to go fully rendered crazy real, or you're going to be super, super graphic, but you figured out how to get a nice little marriage between the two. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I swear I didn't just bring you on here to brag about your work, but I, I it's been fun to, <laughs> it's been fun to have you like on here. Cause this has been super, it's been good. Like a lot of people think like, Oh, I'm just bringing these, I'm bringing these on here. So being these uh, talented folks on here to share them with you, but also it's really kind of selfish because I want to sit here and chat with you and, and like <laughs> learn. <laughs> no, it's been great. I'm, I'm flattered that you asked me because I definitely feel like it, I could learn a lot from you too. I really enjoy watching your channel. So. Oh, thanks. And I didn't pay her to say that. She's This is not a sponsored thing. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, thanks. Well, okay. So we're, we're wrapping it up here at the end. Yeah. Thank you so much for, for taking your time to do this. Um, it, it was It was a lot of fun. It was a whole lot of fun. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Now, for you, do you have any shameless plugs you want to put in there, or what are you? Are there anything that you're excited shameless. that you're doing? Or, yeah, and not shameless. Uh, any plugs about no, my, where can we find my you? My name is okay. Uh, yeah, um, the things that I'm excited about. Well, you can find a lot of my work on Instagram. I'm kind of like a shameless oversharer. Um, I just like love sharing things on Instagram. So you can always follow me there. And then, of course, we were talking about YouTube. I'm like just started that up pretty recently. And I've got a couple of videos that are, could be fun for you to watch, um, whether you are an artist or you're super intermediate, beginner, advanced. I feel like there might be a little something for everyone. Um, and then uh, if you want to shop my designs, I'm on Etsy as well or order a commission from me where I can draw you in this style. Yes. Yeah. And that's all designed by Shay, right? Like everything is under design yeah. by Shay. Yeah, it's designed by Shay. There you go. It's, yeah, it'll it's so hard to it'll say. be below, but it's designed okay. by Shay. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, that's uh, perfect. Yeah, so those are those are the things. <laughs> cool. Okay. Well, thank you so much, and uh, we'll uh, we'll definitely try to. Maybe we'll have you come on again, and we'll draw we'll draw a male figure and see if that <laughs> see if that's harder I'll, to I'll work. I'll draw a male while you draw a female at the same time. <laughs> Oh, there you go. That's a good one. We'll do a little little challenge. We'll and we'll we'll have to give each other the reference, like who we have to draw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. I'm game. Cool. We'll we'll make that happen. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, for everybody else, thank you guys so much for uh, taking the time to walk to or you know watch this video with us and uh, and watch Shay draw Audrey Hepburn. It was uh, for me. I love watching these types of things because I learn so much from watching the the process behind it and then kind of picking her brain was uh was a cool was a cool process so thank you guys if you guys loved what you saw please like and subscribe for for future videos uh we do lots of these we do these each month uh you'll see a new interview with a new talented artist